So while my character in the movie may be able to see the future, I also can. And I know what the future brings. I know that when you see Madame Webb, you're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're gonna see it twice. I can see the future. Oh, what the hell? She didn't see that coming? That's <laughs> not how it works. <laughs> Have you ever been molested by a horse? If the answer's no, then you've never seen Madam Web. What a punch in the balls. This movie was painful to watch. Thank God Spider-Man was nowhere to be found anywhere near this concentrated fart of a movie. It would be more entertaining to watch the Green Goblin taking a shit than to sit down through another two hours of this film. They should have put a disclaimer at the beginning that said, Warning, this film may cause brain damage, erectile dysfunction, thoughts of suicide, nausea, severe depression, extreme boredom, and in rare cases, instant death through spontaneous combustion. I mean, it doesn't really come as a surprise. Who would have thought that a Spider-Man inspired character inside of a Spider-Man universe based off of a Spider-Man comic without a Spider-Man would do poorly? Oh yeah, the entire planet, that's right. And it's not like you couldn't see this dumpster fire coming a mile away if you watched any of the interviews. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Doing good. I like, seeing, I like seeing you in the center of the poster. You feel behind me though. You guided me through. Yeah, but I like you. I like you there. It looks really cool. Okay, well next time we can do it together. Great, like, Madam Veronica. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> I wanted to know for you, like when you're feeling stressed out, like what do you do to unwind and find peace? It depends. Depends on what's available. Sometimes I'll be able to like meditate or go for a walk and sometimes you need to have a tequila okay i'm kind of here for the tequila good like that one I gotta that'll be on me med that'll be me in two hours i love that for you i'm gonna take a shot of tequila in your honor today i appreciate that and i'm gonna take one in your honor i was like okay i see you you were saving people before you didn't need the clairvoyance you was already doing the thing <laughs> I like that we do show, you know, someone who's looking out for these young women. My high school boyfriend's mom was very important to me. So, like, one of my first questions, I wanted to know, like, if you had to have the soundtrack to your life, what would be that song that you would choose to represent yourself? Oh, <laughs> like any song or from the early 2000s? 2000s. 2000s. This is such a hard question. So I wanted to know for you coming up in this industry, I wanted to know like who were some of those women that held you down? Who were the, some of those women who kind of helped you along the way? I would definitely have to say my manager. I started working with her when I was 14 and I'm 25 now. And every time I have an intuition or a gut feeling about something, she confirms that and she's she just says to me, whatever your intuition is and your gut feeling is, that's what we should do. If you actually this stupid. Am I the only one who feels like Dakota Johnson in real life doesn't act like a normal human being? I mean, she's always got this look on her face like she's thinking about something she did that was really bad. And all she's thinking about is if anyone's going to find out. Not to mention this woman would make watching the grass grow an exciting pastime. Speaking of the interviews, if men ever talked about how much they craved power as much as these women do, they would be locked up as megalomaniacs. You can be empowered. Cassie wants them to be themselves and be super powerful. Maddie taught me how to empower myself in my own personal life. Physical power that you know you'll never have on your own. I think there's 
a world in which people could think like, oh, maybe my mind is really powerful. And Very comfortable saying when she doesn't agree with something. She's very comfortable expressing her anger and discomfort and getting her needs met. Celeste, the theme of empowerment is present with all of your characters. That was something that I was kind of like struggling with and thinking about in my personal life. What are you excited most about for Madam Web? I'm just excited to see, you know, all these powerful women. I am the strongest woman this state has ever seen. It really is that bad. But don't worry guys, because I watched this film so that you don't have to, and I'm going to go through it. But before we get into all that, if you're a fan of my content and would like to help support this channel, please hit the like button and the subscribe button, as well as the bell icon to be notified whenever my new videos drop. It's completely free, and all you have to do is make a YouTube account. I upload at least once a week, and I cover movies and TV shows coming out of Hollywood, as well as a decent amount of anime content. So, with all of that out of the way, let's get into Madam Web. How are they going to make a Madam Web movie without Madam Web? And you did it. You really did it. The movie starts off with a flashback with an evil spider guy and Cassie's mom and the jungle researching spiders. Cassie is Madam Web, by the way. We learn that her mom is an insufferable cow and evil Spider-Man is evil. He kills all the researchers and shoots Cassie's mom. Oh, and she's pregnant. A bunch of indigenous Mexican Spider-Men show up, deliver her baby in a pond filled with spiders, and after dying, we jump back to present day. Cassie is a paramedic driving an ambulance, and she's inherited being an insufferable cow from her mother. Over the next few minutes, she sees the three spider girls we'll run into later. One is at the hospital, one flips her off after almost getting run over, and one's in her apartment building. Back on the job, Cassie saves a guy in a car hanging off of a bridge, only for the car to fall off with her inside. She then hallucinates about spiritual spaghetti, and is then saved by the only hero in this movie, her partner, the guy from Parks and Recreation, believe it or not. Oh, and she has magical powers to see the future now, by the way. We're introduced to evil Spider-Man at the opera. He then takes his grandma back to his place and bangs her, and then falls asleep and has a bad dream. In this dream, we see the three Spider-Girls in their costumes attacking evil Spider-Man and killing him. And it was about this time that it really dawned on me that this movie was created as a joke. It looked like cheap CW Batwoman action scenes. To be honest, he kills his grandma after telling her his evil plans because she works for the National Security Agency and needs her ID. Back to Cassie, who we're going to lovingly refer to as Insufferable Cow, she attends a barbecue at a baby shower for her partner's sister. The most diverse baby shower you've ever seen, with every race under God's green earth showing up. You gotta check those boxes, am I right? Insufferable Cow complains about the food, as well as her friends being concerned about her. She spends the whole time sulking because she has to act like a human being, and then sees the future as a balloon explodes. They get a call of a fire downtown and rush to the scene. She sees the future a few more times, which includes one of her paramedic friends getting hit by a truck while he's driving the ambulance. She just lets him go though, so he's dead. Maybe you shouldn't have bitched so much about how we cook the burgers now, huh? Evil Spider-Man, back at his lair, is consistently acting like a Saturday morning cartoon villain and being evil. Back at Insufferable Cow's apartment, she skips her dead friend's funeral to watch movies instead because, you know, she's a cow. And then a bird does the one thing that every member in the five-person audience wants to do. It flies straight into her apartment window and kills itself. The cow leaves and gets on a train, where she sees the future of three girls getting killed by evil Spider-Man. She leads them off the train by telling them they're all gonna die. They do what she tells them, surprisingly, and they get off the train. The acting and the performance here are really bad. I mean, it was so bad it was cringeworthy. Just how everything played out. I mean, it just... It was cringe. They kept following Insufferable Cow, though, while Evil Spider-Man 
now in his evil suit, kills a bunch of cops, but unfortunately, he doesn't kill them and they get away. I hate these people. They're mouthy, arrogant, and the most unlikable characters you've ever seen. They never shut up. And Insufferable Cow gets even more insufferable. They go to the woods to complain about everything, and Spider Cow leaves them there. She goes back to her apartment to do research and finds out about her mom working with evil Spider-Man before she was born. Back in the woods, the three teenage girls have a bonding session. Spoilers, they're unlikable brats with daddy and mommy issues. They leave the woods and go to a diner where the black chick wants to eat pie and flirt with a bunch of random boys. They literally start dancing on the tables, and Sufferable Cow shows up and sees the future where evil Spider-Man kills them all. She saves them by hitting evil Spider-Man with her car and takes them to a motel. They talk about how they all have issues, again, and I'm just done. I'm so bored by this point, I mean the film... It just sucks so much. Insufferable Cow uses her powers and goes back to the diner to have a vision where evil Spider-Man tells her about his evil plan to kill them because he had a bad dream after he slept with his grandma. In order to fight evil Spider-Man, Insufferable Cow teaches the Three Stooges how to do CPR? Okay. And then the cow leaves the girls and heads to Peru to find out answers about her mom and these spiders. Mexican Spider-Man, the guy who helped deliver Cassie as a baby, shows up and Cassie sees the opening scene of the movie with her mom and evil Spider-Man. We find out Insufferable Cow's mom was looking for the spiders to find a magical bullshit serum that could heal Cassie from being retarded. The cow left the three teenage stooges with her friend from Parks and Recreation but his pregnant sister starts to give birth, so the four of them need to go to the hospital. Insufferable Cow shows up, steals an ambulance, flies through a building in the ambulance, and runs over evil Spider-Man before he blows them all up. The three teenage stooges get in the ambulance and evil Spider-Man chases them. They make it to some kind of warehouse, a bunch of fireworks explode, evil Spider-Man gets crushed by a billboard, and Insufferable Cow gets saved because she taught the Three Stooges CPR. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right, and she's blind and paralyzed now, by the way. I guess because of the fireworks or something like that? I don't know. And that's it. That's the end of the movie. Oh my god, was this one painful, guys. I mean, really painful, and uh, that's really all that happens. It was boring, bland unlikable characters, and a horrible, horrible script. No one even puts on a superhero costume. What you saw in the previews? Yeah, that was it. How did the three girls end up with superpowers in the futures? Don't know. The movie never tells us. It's like they didn't even try with this one. I'm not sure if there's an end credit scene because I had to go to the bathroom to piss, and I wasn't going to stick around any longer for this crap. But... All in all, that's the end of it. I'm glad it's over, and now that I've seen it, you guys don't have to. So, if you've made it this far in this video, then I really do appreciate it. And if you could please hit the like and subscribe buttons in order to help out the channel, that would go a long way in bringing back my sanity. I, of course, want to thank you guys for watching, and as always, have a great freaking day.